today we're going to do a video that's a little bit different. And honestly, this is a personal rant about why people hate preppers, why they hate watching videos about prepping, why they think we're all crazy. When you read most of the prepping things that are out there, especially on YouTube, when you start Googling videos, you will find that they are all from a place of doom, gloom, terror, and just fear. And I wanted to do this video because when I was doing my video on five ways you could fail as a prepper, one of the things I talked about was just this idea of operating from a place of fear. And most of you know that that is not my goal here. I believe in being prepared, not scared. We don't want to panic about all of the worst case scenarios. And when we look at those channels that are out there that are super popular, that have way more viewers than me, way more subscribers, they are all about those fear kind of words. They are triggering. They use words like civil war and crash and horde and stockpile. And when we use those words to describe ourselves as preppers or in this space of emergency preparedness, it kind of, it, it's a tightening feeling, right? It, it gets into your skin and you're like, oh my gosh, like I should be hoarding things. Like hoarding inherently is not a great attribute to have. Do we want to store things? Sure. Do we want to kind of keep ourselves and have some supplies? Absolutely. Do we want to make sure that we have thought about the things that we use on a regular basis in our house and we have backups? Yes. But when we say things like hoard and stockpile, it is really negative. So instead we talk about storing and just collecting and this idea that it is a positive versus we are reacting out of fear and frustration and anger because it's not healthy for us. It's not honestly healthy for the community and it's not healthy to approach preparedness from this really deeply rooted fear based thing. And as I kind of mentioned before, or at least I think I've mentioned before, you know, one of the things that makes me really sad is I've had a few friends who have gotten into this prepping space because we've talked about it and they've realized, hey, things aren't always as stable. And a few of them have gone down that fear path. They come back to me with just the worst case scenarios all of the time. And do I think some of those things could happen? Sure, I do. I was in the military for a long time. I understand that there are risks out there. I understand that there are threats out there, probably better than the average person. And it is part of why I want to be more prepared. But if I sat around every day thinking about the fact that there could be a cyber attack that could take out our electricity and our power and our water supply, that would be completely overwhelming. Instead, I need to acknowledge that, yep, there could be a day where I'm without power and I'm without water, regardless of why that is, whether that is an ice storm, whether that is a power surge somewhere on the line that knocks out power for a few days, or whether that is a cyber attack. But thinking through worst case scenarios does not encourage us to take action. It encourages us to just be really restrictive. It's just, it's, it's not good. It's just not, it's not healthy. And so when I started this particular channel, I really wanted to steer away from that doom and gloom messaging because it is what you see when you hear about prepping. And it's why prepping has this negative connotation in a lot of people's minds. I think one, the reaction is, well, if they're right and there's all these horrible things can happen, there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm just going to be like, they're dumb and doing stupid things and I'm going to poo poo on that. Or there's this reaction of like, they're all crazy because they're talking about these worst case scenarios and civil war and the collapse of society and all of the things that you read. And again, it's just, it's, it's counterproductive. So when we are thinking about preparedness, we really want to think about how are we taking care of ourselves and our family? How are we providing for those basic human needs? That is shelter water, food, I would argue some household goods slash sanitation type items. It would also include mental health and just emotional health kind of items. Those are the things that you need to sustain you in emergency situations. And a lot of that has to do with mindset. And so shifting out of this 
fear and instead into the space of, hey, I'm going to do everything I can do to control my surroundings. That is much more empowering. When we switch from that fear to, hey, I want to do everything I can to control what I can control, it is a different energy. It is a goes from a, oh my gosh, I can't figure out what's going on or something horrible is going to happen to a, hey, I can be ready for an emergency situation. I can take care of my friends. It's just a different energy. And so when you catch yourself in that fear space, I would just challenge you to, to kind of stop. Recognize it as completely normal. When you are thinking about the things that could go wrong, it, it can be dark. It can be depressing. It can be terrifying. All those things are true, but we don't want to sit there. We want to acknowledge that, hey, things could go sideways and then go, all right, well, I can't control the outcome or what is happening around me, but I can control how I respond. And so changing that focus to not worrying about what is out there, but worrying about what's in here and what we can control inside our sphere of influence is just way better for everybody. It's way better for you. It's way better for your family. It's way better for encouraging other people to get into a more preparedness focused lifestyle. Because guess what? Even though fear and horror and all the awful things sell on the news. It's it's not what keeps us healthy in mind or heart or soul. And so don't just don't go down that road if you can help it. And I know that it's easier said than done. When you catch yourself doing that, it's really good just to be able to stop and go, oh, I'm kind of spiraling right now. Let me take a step back. Do I really think that is the most likely thing that is going to happen? Probably not. If you are reading those crazy headlines, doesn't mean it couldn't happen. It just means it's probably not the most likely. So, all right, take a step back. What can I do to control the things I can control? Don't operate from a place of fear, but operate from a place of, I want to take steps and be proactive for myself and my family. And that will really help you shape how you approach this journey. Again, it's something that I just feel like I needed to say on this channel. It is a reason that I'm trying to build a slightly different community that wants to be prepared, but doesn't want to be in that dark space of doom and gloom. So as always, we will be prepared and not scared.